Welcome, boys and girls. Welcome to my edition of the virtual classroom lessons. And my name is Mr. AJ. And I'm excited to go over and discuss some things with you all. And I know everybody's at home. And so therefore, you know, let's get this show on the road. So for this virtual lesson, I will be discussing songwriting tips that you can use throughout the weeks while you're at home and working on your skill. So, let's get into it. All right, so for tip number one, I want to let all my songwriters out there know, do not wait to sit down to write. Meaning like, it's never would be a perfect time to sit down and write. Like, so if you're in a car and you're traveling to a grocery store or going over a family member's house or, you know, I know some people that wake up out they sleep to write, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's no excuse. As soon as you get that hunch, they come up here, that melody, that, that lyric, that line, you hear, you hear somebody talking and you, oh, this sound, that would sound dope in a song, you know? So it's like, it's that same thing. So you, what you want to do is you want to, when you get the idea that comes in your head, jot it down, whether it be on paper, Everybody has smartphones and mobile devices, so jot it down, jot the lyric down, record the melody, whatever you want to do, you know, but don't wait to sit down and write, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> tip go it leads me to tip number two, which is set up a place at home to write. So, for those who actually prefer to sit down and write, you know, uh, set, up a, set, up, set up a place in your house or you know some type of physical environment to where you feel comfortable to actually sit down and write some bars. You know what I'm saying? Because your physical environment plays a huge part on you know anything that you do. You know, so uh, most definitely if you if you have a man cave or if you have a certain spot, you know you want to you like to go to to be away to be alone, and you know make make that your spot to go to when you decide that you want to write. Uh, tip number three, try using some nonsense words in your lyrics. So you like, what's nonsense words, Mr. AJ? And that's cool, let me explain it. So nonsense words are, they're kind of like self-explanatory, but they're made up words. It could be made up words, it could be made up hums, it made up melodies or whatever, you know what I'm saying? But pretty much those nonsense words actually gives your lyrics a little more flavor, you know? Uh, it's nothing like making up a word and then starting to hurt other people use your word from your fans and followers and supporters, you know? Um, I made a word that I created, you know, was Snow Me, which is like, you know, it's like homie, but since I'm AJ Snow, I call my my, my males Snow Me's. But anyway, uh, so when you start hearing people come back to you and be like, oh man, oh, what's up, snow me, what's up? And you like, like I created that word. It made you, but anyway, uh, I digress. So yeah, try using different words and made up nonsense words and melodies in your lyrics and, and just, see, just see the results, you know? And I, and I do want to say this though. There's no rules to songwriting. There's only techniques. So it's no one way things should be done. It's just different techniques you can use to make your make your dish, make you know, paint your canvas. You know, it's just like cooking. But uh, yeah. So let's go on to the next tip. So tip number four. I want you to write a write down a song title every day. So. From this point forward, I don't care if it's, you know, you, t you write a song title down called Big Rona, okay? Flip the page, next day, Lil Vid, 19. Flip the page, okay, next day. Quarantine, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter, you know what I'm saying? But write a song title down every day, all right? So tip number five, keep a file of unfinished songs. So... Keeping a file of unfinished songs, that means whether it be you typing up all the song titles you created or all the drafts you got of unfinished songs, which I'm pretty sure any songwriter has some 
unfinished business they have to take care of. You can create a Word document and put in a folder and title that folder Unfinished Songs. Therefore, if you ever want to resort back to it, you will know where it's at and you will have all your files already typed up. Or, you know, if you're using your mobile device, you know, create a, a folder, you know, be organized because organization is key. Create a folder and actually title that folder Unfinished Songs. And every time you start writing on your phone or create a, a voice memo, you, you want to save it to that folder. Therefore, all your unfinished songs will be right there. Tip number six, try using the first line as the last line too. So the first line of the song, whether it be the intro, whether it be the verse, whether it be the hook slash course, try using that first line as the last line too. And sometimes it's not all the time, but it's, it's kind of, uh, when it comes to song structure, uh, it's referred to as verse reframe. Uh, but that's like some in some cases, you know. But uh, yeah, so just try that and see how well that uh, plays when it comes to your, your music and your art. So tip number seven, use imagery and details in your verses. So I know a lot of people sometimes they want to, you know, not, they feel like painting pictures is, isn't what they should be doing or, you know, storytelling isn't something they should be doing. It should just, just be abstract. People shouldn't understand nothing I'm talking about. And that's what makes my music dope. Like, eh, sometimes, but at other times, actually using details and, you know, painting a, a vivid picture to where people be like, man. Bro, I saw everything you just said. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Like, sometimes that's that's actually the best formula. And like I said, it's no, it's no one way about doing things. It's only techniques. So there's no rules to songwriting. It's just techniques. So, you know, keep that in mind when, when I give you these tips. So tip number eight. I want all my songwriters out there to commit to writing for at least five minutes a day. So... That's five minutes. So that's five minutes. <laughs> so if you commit to writing five minutes a day, uh, it would only enhance and improve your writing skills. And that doesn't mean you have to write a whole song. That doesn't mean that you have to write um, only a hook or only a verse, you know what I'm saying, for your five minutes to be right. Just set the time. It could be a free verse. It could be a literally literally a free write to where you just write whatever comes to your mind like whatever you know what I'm saying words and you just write for five minutes until the time on your phone or until the time you might be watching the clock you know and five minutes pass but five minutes a day and hey what can you say all right so tip number nine keep your rhyme scheme the same so for those who don't know what rhyme schemes are uh they chant, uh, to simplify it, think of the last word of a bar or in the line of a poem. And so if the first, if the last word or the first bar was bat, you put an A next to that. And just because it's the first letter in the alphabet and that's the first ending rhyme word that you're using. So bat would be A. And if you was following the ABAB -A -B format, rhyme scheme format so, or it, it would be so bat and let's say chair so bat would be a chair would be b so if you was following the rhyme scheme of a b a b you would have to come up with another rhyme, rhyming word that rhymes with bat and for time's sake let's just say cat so bat chair cat air you know what i'm saying so that would be a b a b so bat chair which would be b and then a word that rounds with bat would be cat that would be an a assigned to it so you know all the a's round together and all the b's round together chair and air so of course you want to write actually bars 
that end with those rhyming words. But in a sense, that's what rhyme schemes is all about. So you want to keep your rhyme scheme the same. And it could be the same for the verses. It could be different for the actual hooks. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like I said, and I will continue to re reiterate this. There's no one one way of, of rule about going about anything when it comes to songwriting. It's just only techniques that you can use in your artwork. And then therefore, it's like making a it's like making a dish when you're cooking. You know, you're gonna put all these different things into the dish and stir it up or put it in the oven and let it bake and then bow. You have your dish, but it's gonna taste different because you included all these different techniques into your dish. So it's the same thing with songwriting. So <clears throat> let's move on. <clears throat> Tip number 10, try switching your verses around. So I know today's time, like, you know, it's not really much three verses. You know, you don't really hear three verses a lot nowadays, but if you do, you know, try using the last verse as the first verse, you know what I'm saying? And, and then scoot everything down. Or if you just write two verses, try using the first verse as the second verse and vice versa. You know, you might even went hard on the second verse knowing that people attention span is low, you know, or short, have a short attention span. You might want to come hard in the beginning and, you know, hopefully that they stick around to hear the rest of your song. But in a sense, you know, uh, switching your verses around would give it a different vibe and give it a different feel. And maybe you want to tell a story from 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 end to the beginning. You know what I'm saying? Just by being creative. So, um, just a tip, once again, try switching that around. Okay, so, tip number 11. Use repetition in the melody. And you want to use repetition in the melody because people tend to cling to catchy songs to where they end up singing your song and not knowing why they singing it. It's because it's, it's catchy. It's because you've been beating, that head over the, beating them over the head with the melody that's repetitive and you're using repetition when it comes to your melodies to where it's memorable. Yeah, and that's what you want. I mean, unless you want to make music that people don't remember, but, you know, hey, to each his own if that's you. But therefore, try that tip and see how that works out for you. Tip number 12. Everything points to the chorus slash hook. So chorus, for those who don't know, uh, sometimes it's referred to as the hook. It's more referred to as the hook and more, you know, rap and hip hop, whereas choruses is more referred to as, you know, referred to as choruses in R&B songs and pop songs and stuff like that. And because choruses tend to be sung, whereas hooks tend to be rapped. Simplest form, as simple as I can get it. But anything. Anyway, everything points to the chorus and the hook. So, that means the intro. If you make an intro, it still points towards the hook. If you, if you, if you start off with a verse first, it should be pointing towards the hook. So, the hook is the meat of any song. It's the most... It's the, it's the hook that should, the hook and the chorus should be the most memorable part of the song that people can sing along to and that's catchy and et cetera, you know. Memorable, short, sweet, all that. But everything points back to the chorus and the hook. So just remember that when you write. So tip number 13. Songwriting is a muscle. I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna say it's a muscle. Anyway, it's a muscle. So what you want to do is you want to work on that muscle. Just like if you were hitting sit-ups, you might not get results the first day. You might not get results the first month. But the more you keep hitting those sit-ups, you start lifting up your shirt. And you're like, oh, okay. Oh, I'm getting a little six-pack there, you know. So it's the same thing with coming to songwriting. So if you take the discipline and sacrifice five minutes a day, and that's the least you can write, you know, five minutes, you know. So if you take five minutes a day, you can write over and over and over, as a month pass, as two months pass, you'll see how easy writing in five minutes it would be. Like, dang, I don't know, that's five minutes went by that quick? Oh, uh, no, nah, I gotta extend my time. And that's what it's all about, some muscle. So, use your songwriting muscles, ladies and gentlemen. So, tip number 14. Don't chase trends. 
Meaning if something is hot right now, let that be hot right now. And don't you try to hop on that trend to, to, to try to be relevant because it's trendy. Because trends is what they is. They trends. That means they come here today, but they go on tomorrow. And however, a trend, however long a trend lasts depends on that trend and what's going on with the culture of music or things trendy. You hear me? So therefore, don't chase trends because you might be behind the trend or you might be late getting on the trend and then trying to adjust your whole style to that trend that's here today, gone tomorrow. If the, Once that trend gone, guess what? Your career gone too. So um, tip number 15. So for all my readers out there that also do poetry and other things, <clears throat> this one's for you. But no, nah, it's really for anybody. Um, you want to read poetry. Reading poetry will actually expand your mind, you know, when it comes to a lot of things, you know, because really when you break down the word rap, it's abbreviated for a couple of things, but, you know, for one that comes to my mind is rhythm and poetry. So that's all rapping is, you know, is having a rhythm with your poetry. All right, members, at this time, I want you to review the first 15 songwriting tips and actually use them use them in your songwriting daily routines and then be on the lookout for part two with songwriting tips from mr aj see you soon